from Alpha Charts with the State of the Market video. Today is October 5th, 2024. Before we get started, this video is for informational purposes only. These are not recommendations to buy, sell, or hold any stock or security. And I may hold positions in some of the equities mentioned, New York time frame and risk tolerance. All right. Thank you all for watching the video. Uh, if you haven't liked and subscribed to the YouTube channel, please go ahead and do that. Also, you can find me on X at AlphaCharts365. I'm posting things there all the time, almost always market related, um, which I think is uh, is real beneficial. And I also have a subscriber group. Um, it's 10 bucks a month, so it is very affordable for everybody. Um, and what do you get for that 10 bucks? Um, so on the weekend, you get an in-depth watch list and market review video um, just for subscribers. You get a focus list video. You get um, annotated charts off this focus list video. You get a midweek video on Tuesdays. I do market notes on Sundays and Thursdays, again, to keep everybody um, involved. That's a, a full market note. Um, if I see stuff in between, though, I'm, I'm set, doing setups in between. I'm doing market and market blurbs, we'll call them in between on things I'm seeing. So this is just the official things that I make sure I hit every day. But as I see things in the market, I also share it with subscribers. Um, and those are the daily posts. Um, I do su subscriber chart requests and um, and all kinds of bonus content. Like I did one the other day looking at utilities and energy names for, for subscribers, went through some scans and stuff. So all kinds of bonus content to, as well. So all of that, and it's 10 bucks a month. Really, I mean, the best value out there for sure. You know, we don't tell you to buy or sell. That's up to you, right? I tell you where I'm going to manage risk. And so listen, sometimes I'm right. Sometimes I'm wrong. This time I was, you know, I had the, a great name and I, I had my stop a little bit too tight and I got stopped out of that one. So that's why everyone manages their own risk. Some members are still in it. I happen to get stopped out. That's just the way trading works. Um, so if you're working full time, if you're new to trading, I think for 10 bucks a month, this is an amazing value again for everybody, um, because of all the, all the, um, content that you get on this. So, uh, anyway, consider doing it. Uh, if you can alpha charge three, six, five, click on that subscribe button and, and you'll be in, um, I think you'll enjoy it. All right, let's get to these charts. Um, here we go. So we have the spy over here and a beautiful hammer on Friday. Now, here's the only thing that, um, again, I've, I'm bullish. I've been bullish. If you watch these videos, I, I, these are my my lines in the sand, we'll call them, to say bullish. And we've had two weeks of chop, two weeks of chop. And we've had some accumulation. We've had a little bit of distribution. Um, so that's all, you know, and, and we've gone sideways. We've gone up less than 1% over the last two weeks. Okay. Um, high is 574.71. So, you know, we have not taken out that high right there. All right. So there we go. That particular high right here so far has not been taken out. Right? That one didn't quite make it. And this, we're still in this, we'll call it chop zone right there so that's going to be my cue that the all clear is, is done and the chop is over um and we're not far away from that and that could happen monday right but right now we're still in the chop zone albeit i'm still leaning to the bullish side with this chart but in the chop zone I like that we're back above the wap from this day that's a big deal for me I, i'd like to see that when we lost it this week i was a little more worried and then we held where we had to hold where we I thought we would hold, um, and we moved back higher. So that's all good news. Um, so I think, you know, the spy chart still has to lean bullish up only 0.26 on the week. Again, choppy week, the prior week, um, you know, up 0.58. You know, when we say, you know, it was only up 0.26, but, you know, it was a 1.69% range or so. So you see how the range was so wide, yet we ended up only up a little bit. RSP was down 0.22 on the week, okay? So that tells you a lot of information there too, right? Again, a very choppy week. And, you know, there was, you know, obviously winners and losers in this week. And and RSP is, is giving you that information. Um, yeah, definitely, again, we have this high right here. And we haven't, you know, 
We haven't broken it yet. Yes, I like that we moved higher on Friday and we're above all the moving averages. So I'm leaning bullish. I'm looking for things to buy 100%. Uh, but we haven't taken it out yet. So it's always in the back of my mind. Looking at the cues. Beautiful double bottom. Tried to break out here. Came back in. I like to... Holding this 23-day is information for me. So now I know that it's going to start to respect the 23-day. And if it doesn't respect the 23-day, then that's that's a problem. You know, and you have this beautiful flag. You can kind of look right here. You know, that's, you know, you have boom, boom, and then went higher, 1.22%. Um, you know, I wouldn't be shocked if we get back up to this 500 level from here. You know, that's a, a very bullish-looking candle, nice volume coming in. Looks looks good to me on the weekly. Uh, price was up 0.15. So really, in the end, a lot of movement, but really just a sideways um, shuffle. You know, um, so that's fine. Equal weights were down 0.14. Looking at the bigger picture on the equal weight, again, that 90, which is above 90. And I use 90 as a general term. It's not exactly $90, you know, but you got to, you know, but it's that 90-ish level, which we're right there at it. Um, that's really, really important for this giant structure, right? Giant structure, whether you want to call this a cup and handle or just a big base, um, it's a big structure. And, you know, if it moves higher from here, I think in general, technology will be doing well. Uh, it hasn't. Technology hasn't been doing well. And so maybe things can change if this moves higher. Um, if nothing else, it will be participating, and that's an important um, that's important as well, right? Doesn't have to lead, you know. We like it to lead, but it has to at least participate. Um, I also like how this is low, higher, low, higher, low, and it's trying to um, break out from here again. I think that shows that buyers are stepping in each time. Um, look at mid caps. They're all the way back near all-time highs again. They look great um, let's look on the weekly. Uh, 0 0.04, right? So about even on the week, but they made it back to all-time highs. So that looks absolutely fine. Small caps were down half a percent. And looking at the daily, you know, some people may call this a flag. I don't because it's just too much too deep. You know, flag is usually a big up and maybe it was three or four bars and then it goes higher, right? Um, when it has this many bars and this deep, I, I don't think, it, it, for me at least, it doesn't give flag status. Um, you know, it's a choppy mess. There's no doubt about that. And let's go back and look. And the 50-day now, right? So it held the 50-day. And I think that's the important area. If you're involved in this name, I think it's got to keep that 215 level. Right. It has got to hold 215, period. Um, and looking at the weekly chart on this one, you know, you can see how it's trying to make the right side of a base. Now, if and when this breaks, we'll call it 235, 235, and holds above 235, that would be significant, and I would be much more inclined to be involved in small caps at that point. But at, but right now, um, it's got this overhead potential supply area right there. Um, I want to you know buy it above 235. Uh, right now, I'm just watching it. That's the weekly chart. All right, let's look at some of these ETFs that are important. We had this nice little consolidation again. Low, higher lows, trying to break out here. You know, you can kind of, you know, nice to see financials not only participating, but in some ways leading, right? Um, looks looks really good. SMH, you know, trying to break out very similar structure. Low, higher low. You know, maybe you say this is a higher low as well, right? And bumping against this general area, VCP style price action, right? For, you know, that's the way, you know, Minervini term. Um, and if it gets above this 255, 256 area, you know, semiconductors are back in play. I'm going to take off these because it really didn't matter, right? You have the 50-day flattening. That's all positives. Again, I'd like to see them leading. Um but at, at minimum, participating, and it looks like they want to. We'll see. Again, we have our levels. On the week, they were up. They were even, basically, on the week. That's interesting. 
Equal weights were down 2%. So now you know the big boys were leading, right? So when you have equal weights down 2%, but the the cap weighted SMH is equal, you're looking at, you know, you, know you, you have to look into it and you say, okay, who's in there? Well, it's 20% NVIDIA, 12.5% Taiwan Semi, and 8% Broadcom, 5% AMD, you know, and then smaller bits after that. So right there is 32 45 percent are these four names right and 50 percent if you include asml right so so that's who we should be looking at if you want to be involved in a semi name those are the names right again this is kind of what i do for subscribers um looking in deeper into these charts all right uh looking at transports Let's go to the weekly chart on this one, too. Now, it was down 2% on the week, which I don't love, but it has a bigger structure it's trying to form here over the last three years. And if this can break out, that would be extremely bullish across the board for me. Transport's breaking out, really bullish. So, again, really big, um, really big base here trying to break out. Um, didn't quite make it this week, but, uh, but hasn't invalidated anything at this point. Equal weight transports. They're back to this trend line um, over the last year or so. That's been resistance. Um, it's a diagonal trend line. And why does it work? I don't know. But I can tell you that it got to, you know, it's now had one, two, three, four, five, six touches on it. And it's been resistance ever since. So don't know why it's working, but this trend line seems to be important, at least right now. Okay, so again, that just means what? If it's a diagonal trend line going down, it's lower highs all the way. All the way. So now, if this can turn the corner and break above the trend line, that's a change of character of the equal weighted transports. Again, something that I'm watching for hasn't quite happened yet, um, but I think that would get me much more um, the bull side. Also, if we see that happen and we see IYT break out of this big base and we see SMH break out of here. Um, and we see XLF moving higher out of here. Guess what SPY is doing? SPY is breaking that level, like for sure. And we, you know, we're off to the races as well. So they all work together. Housing, housing got smashed on Friday. No, not smashed, but down two percent, right? Um, so holding up fine. Um, and I think that's an important part of of everything in the economy is housing, right? That's that's one of the more you know that's right up there with semiconductors and financials and transports um, because it's a, it's a big uh, driver of jobs throughout the economy. And, you know, I think it was just an interest rate issue. I know interest rates um, spiked and, and, and mortgage rates went higher. And so I think that's all it is. I'm not going to read too much into it unless we see follow through and a break of, you know, 116, 117 area. Um, that would change, you know, that could change things. And especially if, break the 50 day would be a problem whatever um but right now i'm not worried about it xhb looks you know roughly the same try to come back in kind of held would like to see this you know hold in this general area if not then the 116 here for xhb as well again i'm not going to read too much into it just quite yet um it's just one day all right so overall i think santa market looks pretty good right i, I think we have levels and we'd like to see you know Listen, do I think that we go straight up from here? Well, I don't know. I, I don't think so. I wouldn't be shocked if we see a little bit more chop, actually, for another couple of days into next week. Maybe a shakeout day on Monday, and then we get to go off on Tuesday or something of that nature. But I think we should be leaning bullish. That's my guess. My guess is we're going to be leaning bullish, and I think that... Um, I think we'll be rewarded for looking for really good setups to buy. And I don't normally do this, but let's go through... Okay. the indexes a little bonus on the back end here bonds got smashed um dow jones near all-time highs we talk about that iwm we're gonna skip to the sectors um so here we go materials looks this is flaggy right here so that looks good if the uh, 94 can hold materials looks good communications at all-time highs energy ripper off this bottom right over here um we started rotating you know we were in some utilities like ceg and vst we've also rotated into some some energy names along the way this past week um financials near all-time highs industrials near all or at all-time highs 
technology looks just like semiconductors, doesn't it? Like one and the same. But you see the VCP style price action and looks primed to break out. Again, all above all its moving averages too. So that, that doesn't look bad. Um, you know, Staples going down, a defensive area. People, looks like they're rotating out of them, right? Maybe into the, the bigger themes of the, of the day. Same thing for real estate. Utilities at all-time highs or near all-time highs. Healthcare, again, more of a defensive nature, um, falling pretty hard. Consumer discretionary. So had this big base. Let's go to the weekly on this. Was basey in here, right? We'll call this a base. Try to break out, and it's still broken out, right? It still has, is above this general area, this 196 or so area. It's in that area trying to break out and trying to really complete this base. And whether you want to look at, you know, this 212 area being more significant or this 200 to, you know, 195 to 200 area, you know, that's up to you, how you want to see it. But overall, it's looking pretty good as well. So when we go through all the sectors of the S&P, you know, what other information is that telling us? That's telling us that things are looking good. We don't see many of these sectors breaking down. And the ones that do look um, like they're breaking down seem to be the more defensive areas like staples and real estate and, and those types of things. All right. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think things are looking good out there. Hope you all are doing well. Don't forget, click on Alpha Charts 365. Click on that subscribe button. I think you will like it. It's month to month as well. So there's no like contracts or anything like that. You you want it, you, you have it. You don't you, you don't want it, you can undo it. Then you decide, you know, two, three months later that you actually loved it. You come back. It's absolutely fine. All right. Hope you all are doing well. Have a great day.